It wouldn't be an understatement to say that Bluey is one of the best TV shows of all time. I'm nearly 30. My kid watches a lot of insufferable things that she wants on, but whenever there's a new season of Bluey, my partner and I shove her aside and say we are going to watch them all, right now, and you're not going to bed until we're done, okay? And she goes, please, it's bedtime. The brilliance of Bluey is, yeah, it's a kid's show, but it doesn't talk down to its viewers. It teaches through play and fun and sometimes pretty hard-hitting emotions. We've cried numerous times at multiple Bluey episodes. Numerous. Seriously, some are unmissable pieces of media. Onesies is probably one of the best written TV shows ever. There's sleepy time, camping, baby race. Even if you don't have kids, your life will be more fulfilled having seen these episodes. I am deadly serious. Bluey is in a league of its own. The animation is always top notch. The use of color is outstanding. And of course, the soundtrack with this uniquely composed, incredible score for every single episode. Could I just use this video to praise the whole Bluey series? I could keep going, but there's a video game to talk about. And you know, when it comes to Bluey, I have certain expectations. Peppa Pig can cram out whatever games all she likes, but Bluey has standards. If there were ever a bad Bluey game, I would leave society and live in a hole for the rest of my life. So, I suppose there's a lot resting on this, and I guess there's two questions really. Did my daughter like it? And do I like it? Yeah, she liked it. Amelia's dabbled in games before, like she likes rolling around the plaza in Kirby Dream Buffet, she likes running around in circles in this Paw Patrol game, making friends with a Goomba in Mario. At her age, just making a character jump makes her laugh like crazy, so I don't know where her standards are really. But being able to roam around the Bluey house, which of course she knows from TV, and the dozens of hours playing with her Bluey doll's house, is probably all she really wants in the world. By the way, this house is scaled like a mansion. I mean, it's big in the show, but good lord the size of this place in the game! Also, because the show is created and based in Australia, it may catch some kids off guard that the kitchen and living area are upstairs, but that's fairly normal in the land of kangaroos. They actually stitch the house together really accurately. I don't think the TV show ever emphasizes the kitchen being upstairs, but you can totally see it in some shots. Like, look, it's upstairs! Here's a clip of Amelia just taking Bingo up and down the slide. This, this goes on for a while. The game has four-player co-op too, so if your little one isn't quite so confident in taking it alone, you can play alongside them, and even give them piggybacks. It's cute! I don't think she cares about the core objectives at all. For her, it's a big bluey sandbox, and for that, it's good. It has some of the better tracks from the show playing in the background, or the actors reprise their roles. It's visually quite good. I mean, you can take a screenshot at any time, and yeah, that looks like Bluey. In motion, it can look a bit off-kilter at times, especially with the pacing of dialogue. And sometimes for cutscene positioning, they'll just sort of flash the models in and out, which looks weird, but meh. So, the three-year-old likes it. But what does the 28-year-old think? Well, I have a few opinions. First off, while everything looks and sounds pretty good, it's clear this wasn't worked on by Ludo. Development went to Artax Games, who do a pretty competent job, but I really wish it went to one of the many talented studios based in Australia. Australia is everywhere in Bluey, it's in the show's DNA, so to put this in the hands of a Spanish team just doesn't sit quite right. Like, give it to Team Cherry, they could do a cool Bluey game. Probably. While the back of the box says it tells a brand new story, it's really just kind of hitting the beats of a bunch of existing stories. Geki's stuck on the ceiling, you play Magic Xylophone, there's an episode around Chattermax and Keepy Uppy. It's cool to make the show interactive, but calling it new is pretty loose. The gist is Bandit and his brothers made a treasure map when they were kids, and you basically just go around the story and gradually get more pieces of the map until you find their treasure. You roam around the Bluey house, the playground, the creek, and the beach, which isn't actually an episode, the beach is just kind of a place to chill. No story happens at the beach. It is all owed to pre-existing stuff, but they have mostly recorded new voice lines. And I say mostly because I hear this one every single day and I know that's not new! You guys are getting good at this! I'm a keepy epic expert. I'm a keepy epic expert. Also, Bingo's voice actress would have been like three years younger during that recording. And for a kid, that's quite a drastic difference in voice delivery, so it does stand out. It's pretty clear it wasn't written by Ludo, nor voice directed by the usual people. The heart isn't quite there, and sometimes characters, despite being voiced by the same people, just sound a little bit off. 
It's clearly a directional thing. 90% of the time, they nail it. They clearly know these roles. It's just the 10% that's not quite right. And there's no way an Australian wrote this line. I'm betting my soul on it. No way did an Australian person write this. Oh, a penguin! I'm not sure what he's doing here in this Aussie heat. <laughs> that's got Spain all over it. Mostly what you do in the Bluey game is you follow little markers around. Like in this episode where Chattermax is rampaging around the house. You have to follow these arrows, find it, and then follow more arrows. At least with this, kids won't get stuck. It's always very clear what to do, but you can turn it off if you want a more hardcore Bluey playthrough. They throw little mini games in every now and then, like playing Keepy Uppy or The Floor is Lava. But in the story, it's pretty short-lived. In fact, it's incredibly short-lived. Like with Keepy Uppy, you just hit it three times and then, oh, it's over. But when free roaming, depending on where you are in the location, you can trigger these mini games pretty much whenever you want. And there's even competitive scoring, so if you're playing with multiple people, these can be actual full-fledged games. Finishing the Bluey game took us around an hour. That's one single hour. And while I was mostly in control, which I guess probably made the pacing of the game quite a bit faster than a kid, Amelia did take the controller on numerous times to bounce on the bed and run into walls. She loves running into walls. That's her favourite thing. It's for sure a short game, but there is a bunch to unlock after with collectibles and stickers scattered around every area, and there's even hats to unlock which you can wear whenever you want. Do you just want to finish the story? Well, then it won't take much time at all. Want to live in an interactive bluey world and see everything there is? substantially longer. Maybe even infinite if your kid's quite young and just wants to roam around and not really do anything. But for me, an adult, the Bluey game is a disappointment. Look, I'm a reasonable guy. I don't expect something that's going to turn the gaming landscape on its head. But Bluey, the show, transcends age. You could be 4 or 40 and still find joy. Bluey, the game, is an easy little kid's game. There is so much more Bluey is capable of in this medium. Heck, a Bluey RPG could be genuinely incredible, especially if it's written and produced by those close to the show or even just live in Queensland or Australia. Do I have unreasonable expectations of a licensed kid's game? No, it's Bluey. Make it a masterpiece, god darn it. This is more like something that wears the mask of Bluey. It looks mostly like it. It sounds mostly like it, but it doesn't really have the soul. It isn't going to make you laugh or cry. It's just a competent, interactive Bluey world. And I guess when I was a kid playing games like Virtual Springfield, where the entire objective was just to roam around and not really do anything, I had a good time. And maybe that's enough. Bluey the game is probably better than most licensed games out there. But boy, Bluey can do more. Your kid will likely enjoy it, and I suppose that's what matters. But what about me? The Bluey video game didn't really give me any vibes. It's fine for kids, but there's really nothing more to this game. Although, it is responsible for this limited edition Xbox Series X, so maybe it did do quite a bit of good for society.